In this video, we will be creating the shopping cart page and the shopping cart page is where the customer will be able to see a list of all of the products that they've added to their shopping cart. They will also have the ability to remove and update the product quantities. So let's go ahead and create that page. So we're going to create cart.php. And the first thing we're going to do is check the post data that has been submitted when a person adds a product or a certain quantity of products to our shopping cart. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to check for that post data. In this code, we are going to make use of the PHP session variable. And we can use PHP sessions to remember the shopping cart products. For example, when a customer navigates to another page for like the home page, for instance, then the shopping cart will still contain the products that were previously added until the session expires. So in this code, we are grabbing that post data and the code will check to see if a product was added to the cart and once we see that a product is added to the cart or if the product exists then we will proceed to verify the product by selecting it from our products table in our database we don't want customers manipulating the system and adding non-existent products so the session variable cart will be an associative array or associated array of products and with this array, we can add multiple products to the shopping cart. The array key will be the product ID and the value will be the product quantity. If a product already exists in the shopping cart, all we have to do is update the quantity. Now let's look at how we will remove an item from the cart. On the shopping cart page, the customer will have the ability to remove a product from the cart. When the button is clicked, we can use a GET request to determine which product to remove. For example, if we have a product with the ID of 1, then we can get the ID via the URL request and then remove it from the shopping cart. Next, we're going to add a section to update the items in our cart. This code will iterate the products in the shopping cart and update the quantities. The customer will have the ability to change the quantities on the shopping cart page. The update button has a name of update and this is how the code will know when to update the quantities using a post request. Now we're going to add a section that handles the user placing an order. This section of code will send the user to the place order page if they click on the place order button. So first it's checking to see if the post variable is set and then if the session is also set and if it is then it's going to redirect the user to the place order page. Next, we have to get the products in the cart and select them from the database. In this section, if there are products in the shopping cart, we can retrieve those products from our products table along with the related column names and descriptions as we didn't store this information in our session variable. We also calculate the subtotal by iterating the products and multiplying the price by the quantity. Now it's time to include the template for our cart. Here we have included the template header 
We've also created a table that will essentially hold all the different items and the quantities that have been added to our product cart. So we can go ahead and save this. Now let's refresh our application and add some items to our cart. So let us view our smartwatch and let us add it to the cart. And we see here that the smartwatch has now been added to our shopping cart page. We are displaying our watch with an image, the name. We can remove it or we can update the quantity. So if we wanted to update this to two, we can update our cart and it will subsequently update the subtotal. We can also remove our smartwatch from our shopping cart and add something else. Now we need to create our place order page that will allow us to fulfill our order once we are through adding items to our shopping cart. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll create a file called placeorder.php and this will be a fairly simple page. We're just passing in our template header and footer and we are giving it a name of place order. And on this page, it will tell us that our order has been placed and thank the customer for ordering with us and letting them know that their invoice and payment details will be sent to them via email. One other thing that we have to do to our site is that we want to ensure that we are getting the amount of items in the shopping cart and being able to display them in our header. So in order to do this, we have to make a modification to our template header in our functions file. So let's open that. And in this line where we have our shopping cart, we need to then make some modifications. So first, we need to add something extra to our template header function. And here we are storing the quantity so that we can display it in the header of our web page. Secondly, we need to create a span that will display that information for us. So I'm going to create a span and it will display the number of items in the cart and we can close our span. So we can go ahead and save this and let us also save our place order page. And we go back to our application and refresh. So let us remove our headphones and refresh. So we see here that we have a nice span here displaying zero items as there are no items currently in our cart. And if we want to add our digital camera, we see here that we now have one item in our cart. And if we go ahead and add several other items, that number will increase based on the number of items that we have in our cart. Now, if we want to go ahead and place an order for these three items, we can now click on the place order and we get a nice page telling us that our order has been placed and that our order details will be emailed to us. Now, next steps would be to integrate a PayPal um, payment system or a Stripe payment system and in integrate it into our web application. So once we once the user clicks on place order, it would then redirect them to a payment portal. And once that payment has been fulfilled, then it would redirect them to this page.